on May 29, 1780, an American army retreating from Charleston, South Carolina was viciously attacked by a British army under the command of a young 25-year-old colonel who was eager to prove himself. At the end of the battle, over 120 American soldiers were brutally killed in what became known as Buford's Massacre or the Waxhaws Massacre. Over the years, people have reported paranormal activity around the battlefield where the savage fighting took place. And today, we're going to look into the story of the battle and the paranormal claims. The year is 1780, and things are not looking good for the American army in the southern colonies. The Revolutionary War had reached a stalemate in the north, and British Commander-in-Chief Sir Henry Clinton decided to take the war south. British leadership assumed that most colonists in the south would be loyal to Britain due to frequent trade and the fact that they had mostly remained unscathed throughout the war to this point. On May 12, 1780, the British had captured the important American city of Charleston, South Carolina, which was the largest port in the southern colonies. The siege had been long and brutal, and American commander Benjamin Lincoln had desperately begged for reinforcements, but they were too late to save the Americans trapped in the city. As word reached the American forces, they slowly started heading back north. One of these forces was made up of mostly Virginians, led by Colonel Abraham Buford. They were marching back to Virginia, and Buford assumed that they were too far to be of any concern for the British. However, the British were looking to quickly expand into South Carolina, and Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton convinced Sir Henry Clinton that he could catch the retreating Americans. Tarleton's force was made up of mostly dragoons, which is mounted infantry, and light cavalry, and he marched his men until they caught up with the Americans under Buford. Tarleton demanded a surrender from Buford by exaggerating the numbers of his force, but Buford declined and even sent a snarky remark back to Tarleton. Buford knew he outnumbered Tarleton and was expecting that he would easily defeat the British due to Tarleton's lack of leadership experience. This decision would prove fatal. While the two sides were discussing potential surrender, both sides violated the accepted rules of war. Buford ordered his men to form up for battle, and Tarleton told his men to keep marching in case of battle, but he did not deploy them for battle. Buford had 420 men with him, and Tarleton only brought about 150 to the battle. The advantage was with Buford because he commanded the Virginia Continental Units. These men had a reputation for being some of the best soldiers on the continent, and they had proved to be one of the few American units capable of standing up to British regulars. The battle started a little bit after 3 p.m. when the advance guard of Tarleton's dragoons caught up with the American rear guard. According to one American soldier, the captain of his regiment was thrown to the ground, stamped by several horses, and then mangled by multiple sword cuts. Buford formed his men into a single thin battle line that stretched across the road and ordered his men to stand their ground. Tarleton formed his men into a single line with cavalry on both flanks and his British Legion Dragoons in the center. Tarleton personally led the army from the front, something that not many did back then but would become his trademark. Tarleton gave a shout and he ordered his entire line to charge. Buford figured that if he waited until the British line got close to fire, that he would kill enough of them to make the British soldiers run away. The American line fired only about 10 yards away and most of the shots missed their targets. The British cavalry charged into the line at three points, followed by the infantry. Within minutes of the melee beginning, many American soldiers began throwing down their arms and surrendering, while others tried to run away. Buford realized the battle was lost, and so he ordered that a white flag of surrender be flown. The battle had come to an end within minutes, but as the British were gathering the prisoners, a shot rang out and Tarleton fell. Seeing their commander fall enraged the British, who felt like the Americans had broken the surrender, and they attacked without mercy. Many American soldiers were rounded up by horses and sliced open. Some were shot as they were shackled together, and many were bayoneted multiple times until they were left disfigured. One report from an American medic states that one soldier had both arms cut off, was stabbed multiple times, 
and as he cried for mercy, he was beheaded. It was an inhuman bloodbath. As it turns out, Tarleton's horse had been shot, and he was pinned underneath, which knocked him out. Some historians debate whether or not Tarleton's bodyguard ordered the massacre, but most accept that the men acted on it themselves. Tarleton quickly took control of the situation and got his men under control. At this point, all but 130 of Buford's men remained, although many were given parole by Tarleton shortly after and allowed to return home. Word spread throughout the colonies, and the phrase Tarleton's Quarter became a popular war cry whenever no mercy was to be shown to the enemy. The Americans had suffered over 300 casualties, many of them being killed, while the British only suffered 5 killed and 12 wounded. Reports of paranormal activity at the battlefield was possibly first reported by British and American soldiers shortly after the battle. Many soldiers said there was an ominous feeling around the battlefield, and some even claimed to hear the sound of screaming men and gunfire shortly after the battle. It's possible that these soldiers were experiencing PTSD from what they witnessed during the battle, and maybe one of the reasons the British quickly left the area. Stories began to be told that late at night you could hear sounds of the battle, but this was more than likely a story invented to scare young children. In more recent times, locals have reported hearing the sound of gunfire, clanking of sabers, smelling gunpowder, and most interestingly, a phantom horseman wandering the battlefield near the woods. It's possible that this could be one of the Virginia Dragoons who was cut down during the fight, or it could be one of the British cavalrymen keeping guard over other phantom soldiers that we may not see. Haunted or not, People won't deny that there is a strange feeling that comes over you when you visit the Waxhaws battlefield. Abraham Buford would go on to command an American regiment at the Siege of Yorktown and lived until 1833. Bannister Tarleton would become a hero to the British for his actions during the Southern Campaign and a villain to the Americans for his brutality and aggressiveness. He would participate in the Siege of Yorktown, surrendering with the rest of the British Army. He would also die in 1833. Both men could never escape their actions at Waxhaws and would forever be haunted by the horrible things that happened there that warm May afternoon. <laughs>